time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our lives, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey! Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live, Tuesday, September 17th. S&P down 14, NASDAQ down 43, Russell up 17, Dow down 104, gold and silver both red, notes and bonds both a little red, 10-year yield up a half percent, oil up almost 2%, natural gas down a little over 2%, soybeans, corn, green, wheat, red, euro in the pound, a little bit red to flat, Bitcoin up 5%. And the VIX is up three and a third, sitting at 17.72. Uh, I've gotten flushed out of two. I kept my position size small today on my price action trades, just six lots, but got flushed out of both of them without hitting any profit targets. So just this, let's see, little move. My first one. Oh yeah, my first one was in here. I got bounced out at about 11.20 on that flush. I was very close to hitting my 20% before that happened. And then this recent one, I just put one on about 15 minutes ago and this little flush took me out. My Bix are holding up. I've had several, one, two, three, four, five, six one-sided stops out of six tranches. I've got one more tranche getting ready to fire, but I'm still slightly green, which is nice. It's the nice thing about those. Even with the uh, big one directional moves, you can still stay green. Uh, double calendars, took a bunch of calendars off this morning for a bunch of profits. I've got a one, two and a one, three that I put on. If we do happen to get a bounce, I should be able to hit 10% on my one, two before the end of the day. And I'll close part of it. And then I put on a early Wooga and a regular Wooga, both same strikes with that little flush there combined. They're down about 10%. Um, that is about it. Chad, how's your day? I've done a couple trades. Actually, I did a one DTE, and then when it started to get a little out of whack, I just went ahead and canceled it. Got some back from the long puts, but it ended up being a minus $1,380 loser. Uh, my AM number one got flushed out. I uh, was able to get a little back on some on my puts. Sold them at $2.30. I thought I waited a little bit longer. I could have got a little bit more, but. Uh, so that instead of a full loser, that was a minus 1,050. And then just had a 20, uh, my lunchtime number one, I booked 20%, 40% and got stopped out. So that um, was a 1680 winner. So I am um, plus 630 for two TLC trades. I am minus 1380 for one DTE. I also have a Wooga that needs a bounce or it will be a loser. So as long as it, if it can get up to, it's got to stay above 56.25. It's kind of right at the break even right now. Yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the thirties and 35s for Wooga on my short strikes. I'm on the thirties and forties. So we'll see. I may get in one more, but I want to see this thing 
settled down a bit. Yeah, I was, I was, I'd closed my computer up, went and did some things outside in the yard and came back in, saw that um, Price had had a good about hour, uh, 45 minutes, 50 minutes of consolidation. So put that lunchtime number one on and was able to uh, book 2040 before that little nasty flush happened. I don't know if I'll put on another TLC trade or not. It's just. A little rough with some of this herky jerky price movement. I've got a couple of <clears throat> transformers that are both upside vertical, so it doesn't look like those are going to hit. This one would have to get above 56.50. So I'll, otherwise, I'll book minimum profit of 100 bucks on that one. This one would have to hit 56.80. Otherwise, I'll book minimum profit of 190. So my NDX one from yesterday that expires today, NDX would have to get above 19,465 for that one to hit. Looks like my most recent BIC just fired, but it couldn't, based on the criteria I have for the call side, it did not, there was no matching premium. Oh, there we go. Just filled. A little delayed. Uh, yeah, just master my power hour trade. The premium was so small, it, it had to be a straddle yesterday at the end of the day. I think he's asking if you bought or sold it. He sold it. Oh, yeah. It's TLC. It's all selling iron condors or on rare occasions, a straddle at the end of the day just because the premium's too small for a iron condor. There's no part of TLC where I'm buying anything. Seems like there's kind of a little bit of a price pattern here. Push up, chop a little bit, go down. Push up, chop a little bit, go down. I've got an order to close six out of my 10 contracts on my 1-2 DTE. My order's at uh, 1080, which would book over 10%. It's up about 8% right now. Can we talk VRR for tomorrow? Sure. You you have a question about it? About putting one on?
Uh, I like to do them in SPX or NDX because they're cash settled. But um, so let's just look at SPX. So if I was going to do a one DTE, I like. Are you are you thinking bullish or bearish? Okay, so I'd go to the call side to about the thirty delta. Buy. And then sell the 10 wide. Then I'd go over to the puts to about the 20 delta, sell, and do that 20 wide. So that, that would be right there for almost even money, basically five cent credit maybe. So then look like this. You'd have a max profit of a thousand. And I always I always use the downside break even as kind of my exit point. So that'd be a minus seven hundred. Or you could transform it in a few different ways. There, I'd supposed to screenshot Chessmaster. So SPX is right at the expected move for the downside. It's broken below it a couple times, popped back up above it. Right now we are right on it. NDX has been treading around below its expected move for the day. Uh, you could do a bearish one on VXX if, yeah, for just a pure volatility contraction play. I already have one on, so I'm not going to put on another one, but I've got this one on that you'll find in the options selling channel. If you were going to put one on, I need to go out to 31 days. You do it on the opposite. So you'd buy the call spread. You'd buy the you'd buy the spread on the put side, and you'd sell the spread on the call side. So you could do like forty six, forty three. You could do something like that. Well, do I want to get in another? Let's see what we're trading at here. Yeah, premiums are looking pretty thin. I was just looking at them. I think I'm just going to take my small red day 
Oh, I'm sorry, my small green day for TLC. Going into the FOMC. 10 wide or 15 wide for lower premium. Kind of feels like it wants to flush. My Wooga is still green, but needs a bounce. It's about break even. Yeah, mine are outside the break evens. Made a little bit on day trades this morning. Biggest movers. Team is down over 5.5%. NVIDIA down one. Apple down a quarter. Meta and Tesla a little bit green. UPST, plug, W all up six plus. Yeah, I think I'm just going to ride with my uh, Wooga and my double calendars here till the till it's time yeah, to my homes. Same here. Twenty five butterfly trading for about sixty five seventy cents. Financial juice turned on. Yeah, exactly, DRB. That's correct. See if we can stay between 15 and 30. That would be good for my Bix. Yeah, that's the, yep, that's my plan, Elliot. I'm not going to do the uh, normal iron condor there. I think there's just too much uncertainty about the actual rate move, the rate cut. Yep, that's the one I do, 30 Delta. So the data comes out at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. So we'll start streaming about 10 or 15 minutes before that. Yeah, Moel, check, the, check my trade plan. It's on the trade plan sheet.
you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the FOMC trades. use a bounce up to 30 that would be really helpful went to casey taco company today had some brisket tacos for taco tuesday those are pretty good where's that at River Market. I always walk down there. It's about a five minute walk from my office. Okay, getting a little bounce. Wooga coming back to life. Yep. This bounce is helping tremendously. Keep going a little bit. My one, two is going to hit. I'm going to have to make a, might have to make a trip down to downtown there shortly to city office or city hall. Uh oh, what'd you do? So I got in the mail last week saying I owed the city $2,600 in taxes for my Airbnb. No clue about it. 600 of those dollars are in penalties. So the city has imposed now a quarterly tax for short-term rentals. Did they communicate it? No. Mm. They just they just wait till you don't pay it. Then they send you a bill and with all kinds of fees and interest. <laughs> and then when you try to talk to them about it and call the people that number that is on the forms that you get, they don't answer and they don't return your calls. Sounds about right. Yep. Sounds like Kansas City, Missouri at its finest. Yeah. So yeah, it used to be like you'd turn in, you just turn it in as a 1099 miss with your taxes, but now it's a now it's a quarterly tax. So four times a year. You have to pay it. Hmm. <laughs> so ridiculous. Uh, no power hour trade, Kelvin. Just premiums are just too, too, too uh, small for me, given the uh, little price flushes we've been getting. So I'm just rolling with my woogas. I'm uh I got a small green day for TLC on two trades. Red overall if you include the uh one DTE. Yeah, Chad, did you see that screenshot I posted in this channel about the one DTEs before FOMC day? Uh I saw something about it, but I didn't look at it too close. Here, they don't me... perform well probably. No, because you you you're basically taking taking all the risk, but the decay is nowhere near yeah. normal. Yeah, and you know, I I just posted it again. Yeah, in the live stream this morning, I was like, yeah, the VIX was down just a little bit before the open, and I, which I normally wouldn't take it, and I just I don't know, probably shouldn't have, obviously. So it's I kind of broke my own rules too. So this is going back. So this is FOMC day, all days before FOMC, going back to 2020. Ah, gotcha. oh, it's 2023, looks like. Yep. But yeah, you just especially lately, it's just been getting crushed.
Yeah, so the op well, the options are stay in bid until after the announcement. You'll you'll see sometimes sometimes you get a little bit of like if you do a zero DTE iron condor tomorrow, sometimes you'll get a little bit of decay. But I don't even I don't even do those just because the decay is much slower most of the time than a normal day, and so you're taking the same amount of risk for less value. But they're staying bid and because of the anticipation of the of the announcement and then and then typically i i sell an iron condor right before the data comes out at 1 p.m central 2 p.m eastern because then you get a quick decay you know sometimes you can hit 20 30 percent within you know a pretty pretty short period of time and that but i'm not doing that trade tomorrow just because of the uncertainty around whether the uh, rate cut will be 25 or 50 basis points. Usually um, it's pretty well known whether they're, you know, what they're going to do with rates and all the uh, jumping around is more has to do with the wording or the statements or forward looking, forward looking statements. And so, but tomorrow's a little bit different. So I'm going to sit that one out. Yeah, I've made I've made money on FOMC day. Usually, I I've done a um a morning TLC, but then I stop. I don't I don't know about tomorrow though. With it, you know, this will be the first time where it's actually there's going to be a rate cut and everything. So that's different than normal. So I'll probably probably pass maybe on TLC tomorrow. I usually do that Iron Condor he's talking about that he's not going to do. So I might do that strangle. We, we've had a couple times recently where putting on that iron condor right before the announcement for using $4 strikes was still 100 wide. We'll see what it is tomorrow. Right now, the $4 strikes would be About 180 wide. Now I don't I don't do a Rick either because um The premiums are so juiced, so the structure of it's not very good. In other words, usually you have very little upside profit potential. And, you know, you typically don't get very, you may get a little, a lot of times you get a little bit of movement kind of at the, in the morning and then, but then things just kind of flatline almost until the announcement course that is not always but that's kind of the normal and then and then like i said as soon as the announcement comes out you get a you get a vol crush but which which works against rick and unless it you know unless it goes down the upside profit potential is just not there based on how the options are priced. My one, two is getting close to hitting that 1080 profit target. I need to pop back up a little bit.
There's yeah, there's two always two ways to look at it from from a binary event like this. If uh I would say if we get a 50 point cut, market goes up. I would say if we get 25, it may go down. But then the flip side of that is, you know, the market could perceive a 50 as bad and go down. So your guess is as good as mine. Not a gamble I'm interested in. All right, SPX coming back down. Could yeah, not hold above that expected move area. It's not kind of what I, it, it just felt heavy. Get back up there. Creeping down towards lows of day. Wuga said day before FOMC's guaranteed profit, so I hope hope he wasn't lying to us. Back up, back up you go. What do we got here now, straddle? You can still get five wide, Chad. Yeah, you can get five wide. Now, nice just... juicy five wide. <laughs> I mean, that was just a 10 point move in 10 minutes. So, me no likey that. I need a 10 point move up for my Wooga. Closer to 30, the better. I'm going to move my. One, two, order down a little bit to 70. Yes. 
I got the same strikes on the early and the regular. So whichever one, both of them, both of them got a hit. Yeah, I have um, 25, 35s on one and then 20 and, I'm sorry, 30 and 40s on another. So 30 would be dead center for one and it would be at my short strike for the other. Get back up above that expected move area. Big Scott back up above 18 earlier today. And we did hit a new all-time high in SPX. New all-time high in SPX, 5670.81 before we sold off. NDX is not near, hasn't been nearly as strong. Had an all-time high of 20,690. It's still 19,394. The Dow hit a new all-time high. And Rut, it's been a long time since Rut hit a new all-time high. Back in 2020. As Elliot likes to say, the weakest of the bunch. Nice little push up there. Let's have one more little push up to 30. Yeah, let's keep it trucking. Now, don't come back down. Stay up there. My combined wugas are up about 20%. We got my um my thirty five my twenty five thirty fives are up thirty two percent. Yeah, stay up though. Doesn't want to push up above that 25 level much. No. There's 40% for my. Twenty-five thirty-fives.
you know, to 30. Still got almost, I still got 28 minutes to go. Maybe Wuga wasn't lying to us. Having trouble staying above 26. Get back up. All right, trying to get filled on my one two at ten sixty. Still be ten percent. Not quite filling yet. It's right there. There we go, filled. Just couldn't hold its head up. What else you guys want to talk about? Anything? Any questions? If you're new here, obviously we got a lot of downtime. Feel free to ask questions. If you can give us one good push up, it might just hit profit targets and then it can go down all at once. Moel, the Rick goes. So when I when I first started trading Rick, I would base I would base my entry 
on an SPX gap. But then Option Omega came out with the VIX filter. And so I trade it based on the VIX gap. And then 1DTE is based on the VIX gap as well. It's based on where the VIX opens compared to where it closed. They could never come to an agreement, Elliot. Basically, Tradier is saying that Trade Steward has to pay for their own SIBO data for the indices. And uh, Trade Steward is saying they get it. It just it, each individual user is responsible for that data. And because they get it through their broker, it should come through the broker. So they couldn't agree. So Trade Steward doesn't want to buck up to pay the fees. And Tradier is saying it's a compliance issue. So it's not going to happen. Uh, Mike Smith, um, there's no, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about it. There's no, there's no class or videos or anything on the Wooga. It's just simply, if you have, Mike, you have option Omega, all the criteria is right there on the back test. No, I trade SPX in Tradier all the time. It's just a it's just a, a trade steward. I can't I can't do bots on my Tradier account. Oh, well the and they and they don't have stops. <laughs> so that's a problem. They don't have stops on spreads. Uh, the uh, chess master, the big stuff, that's all pretty new. Something that Elliot and Lasoza kind of came up with the idea for. So we just, we created that big channel. And then I talk a little bit about it. If you watch my most recent trade plan video, I talk a little bit about it, but there's no, there's no course or anything. I guess I could put together a video if needed, but it should be pretty self-explanatory from the back test. Oh, we're getting a bounce. My Wugas are up 31% combined. Yeah, I'm about uh, 15 cents away from hitting profit target on my 2535s. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, my 2535s. Yeah, Mukesh, I can do that. I've got it on my list, but I was still just kind of working out some of the little nuances in trading it before I put anything together. But I'm I'm to the point where I can do that now. So let me... Make another note here. I'll do that tomorrow, actually. So I won't be trading much before FOMC.
18 minutes to go. Let's see where these butterflies are trading at. Looking at the 25s. Trading for about a dollar ten, maybe. Dollar five. So chess master, do you have option Omega? I would say that Bix, if you're going to trade Bix, you really need to have option Omega. There are a lot of little nuances that you want to figure out depending on how you want to trade it. Yeah, I have mine fully automated. You can do it on, you can do it with Trade Steward. I do it with, uh, I do all my BIX on my IB account. So I'm using TAT, Trade Automation Toolbox. So here's all, you know, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tranches today. And I didn't, I never touched anything. Currently up about 1,200. My last tranche can pin between 15 and 30. That would be ideal. Yeah, unfortunately, you don't have an option with Tasty. They've been uh, telling Trade Steward it'll be two weeks to get something done. I can't re I can't even remember what they're working on now, but they are uh, Trade Steward is waiting on them for something, and they've been telling them two weeks for about six months. Gold took a little pullback today off of its all-time high from yesterday. By the way, I would I would think gold is going to move tomorrow too after her FOMC. So if, if you have this VRR that I have on, I'm going to leave mine on because I think we I think it's still going higher. But FYI, if you are uh Worried about that. You may want to take that off before FOMC. And I'm going to leave my UVXY and VXX trades on as well. This UVXY only has three days till expiration. So if we get a big spike in vol, that one's going to end up being a loser. I've already taken three of the nine contracts off, but the remaining ones 
could get hurt if we have a vol big vol spike. The other VXX ones are out in the October cycle, 31 days, so they have a little bit more time. There's profit target on one of my um, Wugas. You hit it fifty percent. Yep, that's that was the um, fifty six thirty fives, fifty six twenty fives. We'll go ahead and close my other one here too, just because we're getting close. Build it four bucks. So original fill was. Like my wig is run. That was five twenty-five. Oh yeah, you're 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 holding yours to the close, right? I let I'm ride or die with Wuga. Yeah. 30, 35. I need between there to pin. Looks like I took my one two off a little bit early. It's at fifteen percent now. My one threes popped up to about 8%. I'm going to let that one go till tomorrow. And my remaining one, two. I booked 940 on one Wooga and 505 on another. So the 505 is a lot smaller count. One minute till MOC. Yeah, two Wugas, Calvin. One was a little bit earlier than the other. Two separate accounts. Our top closing balance, the S&P 500 buy side, one spot, one five billion. One point one five billion buy side. Work in the 25s and 30s. It's like the 30s might be trading for buck 60, buck 70. I'm going to add a 35.
Sitting at 30, 30s. Like they're trading for about a dollar seventy, maybe. Need to hang out at 30 for a minute. to 32. A little over five minutes. Looks like the thirties are around a buck eighty. And sitting on our strike, but not quite getting there. Not quite getting to two bucks. Thirty fives are getting closer now. Build on the 35s. Canceling the 30s. Canceling the 25s. Build on the 35s on my bot as well. We can pin here. Wooga is going to be happy. My Wooga. Need to move first, though, away from 35. Pushing above 35. Naughty Dog is just now getting to his computer, starting to think about Mahomes. A quick little flush down to 30 would be nice. 
a little below 30. And it can bounce back up. Build at 57.30, Naughty Dog. But you started your bot at 57.30 time. All right, Mahomes, you got uh, a little over a minute. Ken, we don't need the negativity around Mahomes. He needs positive reinforcement. There we go. Come on down. Below 32 would be a winner. Five seconds. Uh-oh. He's climbing. Ooh, ooh, not a good, not a good mark. Fifty six, thirty four, seventy one, almost a pin. My Wugas also pinned both of them, same strikes, so plus five thousand four ninety on those. It's a nice win for the Wuga. All right, all, tomorrow is FOMC day. Chad will be live streaming in the morning for Mighty 90 and Runners. And then the calendar says Power Hour live stream, but we will not be streaming for Power Hour tomorrow. We will be streaming during FOMC. So we'll start that at 1245 Central, 145 Eastern. All right, all, take care. Have a good night. Talk to you soon.